Hi, I wanted to talk about some, uh, well, first talk about how the clutch works on one of these older Kubotas, and then explain a couple of pieces and explain what some of your issues you have with your clutch could be caused by. Uh, so obviously it's not an easy job to get through the clutch. It's not difficult, it's just time consuming. Uh, your clutch pedal is hooked to a clutch fork that's hooked to this tube inside here that pushes your throw out bearing out into the fingers of the pressure plate. And it, the fingers on the pressure plate pivot, I'll show you then, and then it releases the clutch. It takes the pressure off of it. But if you push the clutch in and you just get a bunch of like whining and whirling kind of noises, you might have a bad throw out bearing. Um, these are serv well, these are greasable. There's a hole in the side of the tunnel over here that you can grease it through. Um, a big problem is, which actually where it's actually straight in here. There's there's a grease zerk in there, and this is kind of a double-edged sword. I don't know if you can pick it up, but basically these throw-out bearings can get noisy and start to fail because they never get greased. But you also don't want to over-grease them that you have grease spewing out the front and getting on your clutch disc and contaminating it and ruining the clutch disc. So, you know, it's one of those things, once you do it, I would maybe give it maybe a pump or two of grease once a year if, if you even need to do it that frequently and one of the main things is just trying to throw the tractor inside and trying to eliminate some of these problems in the first place but so you can get that noise um, from the throw out bearing um, and then where do I have it let's get. so I did just replace this because I've been chasing my own problem on this uh, tractor. This will be the third time now I think I've had this part over the years trying to get it the way I want it. Um, this is your clutch disc. This is like a friction material, somewhat similar to like a brake pad would have like a friction material, but um, basically this is your pressure plate, this whole assembly here, and what it does is it, this ring puts pressure on the back side of the clutch disc and pushes this up against the flywheel and then this rides on the flywheel and then this is splined to um, put the power to the drive shaft to send it back to the transmission because this is actually a drive shaft this is not just an input shaft to the transmission it has a uh, cv axle or a like a cv shaft because um, it doesn't have a regular U-joint, it has like a CV joint with little ball bearings in there and lets it, lets it be able to rotate and angle. But, so this is a new clutch disc, it is not contaminated now because it's a new one. The old one did have a little bit of grease on it, so I thought maybe that could be part of my problem, so I just went ahead and replaced it. These parts are getting a little expensive, this clutch disc. This little thing is like 200 bucks anymore. Um, this is directional. Is, this has a shoulder on the one side. The shoulder goes towards the back. And it is does have a nice taper to help you align uh, putting the tractor back together and align getting the shaft to go back in. And then, pressure plate. Yeah, the pressure plate's pretty simple. You will want this surface to not be gouged or heat spotted or anything like that. Um, all of these little cylinders here hold a spring because that's how it gets its spring tension. I don't know if there's any real good way to show them to you. I don't really think you can see in those holes. But anyway, they're our springs in there and that's what gives it its uh, gives your pressure to your clutch 
and allows it to work. And now that throw out bearing, the piece I showed you earlier, when you push it in, it goes up against these uh, fingers and they pivot and cam and it'll release the spring tension and it'll drop this plate down in, which I don't, I'm sure I can't. No, there's no way I can push that in. But, which there you can see the springs. If I tilt it a little. So, yeah, if you push the throttle bearing will go up against here and it'll push these fingers down and it'll push, compress the springs and then this disc will go out a little and it'll release your clutch. And you don't want, your clutch pedal adjustment can be very critical because um, if you, you only need to release push this in enough that there's just an air gap in between the flywheel and your clutch disc and this pressure plate to release it. Otherwise, if you're doing any really anything more than that, you are going to be overworking this pressure plate, aka you're going to prematurely wear out your springs and then that can cause your clutch to slip and then your pressure plate and clutch are going to have to be redone again. So you want to make sure you get your uh, clutch pedal in proper adjustment, that you're not pushing these fingers, you know, crazy amounts. They only just need to release the clutch with a little air gap, and that's plenty. So, and that just bolts on to the front here. First your flywheel would go on, then it goes on these little pins and stuff and it uh, it only goes one way so. and your flywheel okay so another critical piece. Whenever you really do a flywheel, or whenever you do a clutch job, your flywheel is very critical. It normally will, you can see this little groove, or this little marked spot where basically that clutch disc is riding against. Um, and if your clutch slips or is bad or whatever, the flywheel can get grooved and marked all up. And because of the extra friction and heat um, of it slipping, it can get heat spotted and um, can warp a little bit. So that's why you get your flywheels machined when you do a clutch job. Now these, probably for most machines, these um, dowel pins here would have to be removed. That way they can properly machine the face of this down. Otherwise these will, dowel pins will probably be in their way. So always when you're doing a clutch job to start fresh because the components really aren't that cheap anymore and it's not the easiest job quickest job to take the tractor apart and split it in half so you always want to do it properly now this one probably was redone at one point because the flywheel was off because these uh when you unbolt these these little tabs should actually be bent down in against to keep the bolts from backing out You'll tighten the bolts, torque them down, and then you'll peen these tabs back in. That way they lock the head of the bolt stationary. So, I the flywheel was in perfect shape, so I just took a little, like, wool lock scotch brite disc, and I scuffed the face of this back up. It's really good. There's no issues on that front. Um, and then... still got the issue of the pilot bushing, which I think is part of my problem that I've been having on this tractor. Uh, a lot of times, especially doing like a parking lot maneuver where you're trying to back it into a tight space, um, the tractor was kind of whining and it wanted to lurch a little bit. The clutch was a little grabby, even though I'm depressing the clutch and the clutch should be fully disengaged. The clutch was not slipping in any shape or form. 
Um, so, I didn't realize that this does have a pilot bushing. And I didn't think so because it wasn't in the end of the flywheel. It was on the end of the crank. Some clutches um, will have a bushing or a bearing right in the flywheel. These go into the end of the crank and it's a bushing and it also has a seal. So I did, the bushing is really worn. I don't know, let me see if I can find where I put it. Look, Judge. Okay. Here it is. So obviously I had to, uh, it has a slit down the center of it. So I started just pulling it in and being able to rip it out. But if you look here, it is worn down and I think there's a spot where it's actually starting to wear through. So this pilot bushing is completely shot. Um, I don't know if the original ones were just kind of like a bronze-ish material like this. They were a full bronze or not. But the new ones, it's kind of hard to show because I packed the new one with grease. They, they're like a bronze jacket on the outside. And then they have like some type of a plastic. Probably something um, like a harder plastic than a nylon. Maybe, um, maybe something like a Teflon. It's like a yellow, like, it has kind of like a little honeycomb dimples in it to kind of hold the grease and uh, help give it a longer service life. And then, so that would go into the end of the crank over here. So this one is completely shot. I'm hoping that's my problem. So that goes into here. Um, this is supposed to kind of be like a press fit, but it's not really feasible to do it because it's on the crankshaft. Um, you can't really take the engine out and put it in a shop press, so um, either use like a brass punch or even if you have to use a piece of wood, don't use just a metal hammer on the end of this because you will start to peen it over and ruin it before you get it in. Um, and then this was the seal. Obviously the seal got bent using a seal puller getting it out but it was completely gone. There was no grease left in this. It was just all coming apart and worn out. And now this has a very critical uh, function. This, theoretically, if it's not worn out, is supposed to uh, be about right here on the shaft and it keeps the shaft centric when you push your clutch pedal down and release the clutch. Um, I think what was happening was, um, since this bushing was worn out, this shaft was walking around a little bit, and then it was cocking the clutch disc into the flywheel when it wasn't supposed to be when I was releasing the clutch. And that's why I was getting the little bit of grabbing and the whining noises and all the stuff it should not be doing. So. You do got to pull off the flywheel. It's definitely hidden back in here. You know, if you're not used to doing clutches on these or just real familiar clutches in general, you know, this is definitely something that I was overlooking and didn't know they had because it's not in the fly or yeah, it's not in the flywheel. It's and the part is not listed on any of the um, clutch or flywheel diagrams. It's on. It's under the engine diagram, under the piston and crankshaft diagram because it goes into the end of the crank. So, once I found that, I pulled this all back apart and I found just all full bushing and seal. So, now it's going to go back together and hopefully it'll work. And one more thing, so obviously once you put this new pilot bushing in and the seal you'll want to pack it with grease that way it has some lubrication in there to give you a proper service life and then also your clutch disc goes on these splines once it all goes back together and you want to apply again a small amount of grease you don't want to be too liberal and have globs of it hanging everywhere because it can eventually drop down and get on your clutch disc and if you contaminate your clutch disc it can start to give you um, it can start to do bad things, kind of like this is doing now. But obviously that's not the case anymore since I replaced the disc. Um, so yeah, this is a dry shaft. 
that goes back to the transmission. So there's not like, if your transmission, the input shaft is leaking, you won't have any oil coming out of here. Now, you do have to worry about your um, rear main seal. If you do have any seepage or anything, this would be the time to do your rear main seal while you're in here. But obviously this thing is burn dry. Um, this leak up here I had was just from this um, the decompression knob that opens the, or pushes down the uh, exhaust valves and opens um, and lets the engine basically just freewheel with no compression if you need to bleed air out of the fuel system or whatever. So I'm going to just clean the top of the engine because this leak is now fixed, it's staying dry. Um, and then maybe after I'm done, maybe I'll make a video of the clutch pedal. Um, there's really, I think there's like three adjustments you really should be doing. I'm not going to go into the specifics of what the specifications are of what, how much tolerance you want because it depends on what model you have. It will all vary. Um, but basically, that you want to have a slight gap between the pedal and when it starts to hit the pressure plate, when you'll start to feel like a fair amount of resistance when it hits those fingers. When the throttle bearing hits the fingers on that pressure plate, you don't want it to be uptight against where it's not letting the pressure plate fully engage it. So you'll want to have a little bit of gap there. And then um, also, again, you don't want it that say it hits the pressure plate here and you can just push, you know, this pedal way down through to the floor, which that is that this adjustment here, where it just basically is a bolt that stops it up against the bell housing. It doesn't let it pedal keep traveling downward. Um, and then to adjust the, uh, you can uh, adjust it down here for the, um, the free play for when the throw-up bearing starts to contact your pressure plate. And then this is obviously your stopper, and then one, this is a, not really for the mechanics of the clutch. Um, this is just your adjustment for your, um, your safety switch uh, solenoid up here. There is a specification for that as well. Um, so depending, I would basically make sure, first I think you want to set your free play, that there's a little bit of free play before you start to contact your pressure plate. Then I'd probably set your pedal travel, and then I'd probably just set your uh, safety switch solenoid. Because that's kind of a minor thing, and that you don't really need to set any of that until the other two adjustments are made. And then just lightly grease, you know, the throw-out bearing, and everything should be good. Um, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe.